Now, let us understand the pathophysiology of acute infarction. Acute infarction is caused due to complete cessation of blood flow and oxygen supply to the myocardium and results in loss of membrane integrity and normal sodium-potassium at pace pump, which results in leakage of potassium out of the cells and causes local hyperkalemia. As a result, the first change seen in patients is the presence of hyperacute T waves, which are tall peak and symmetric hyperacute waves are followed by SD segment elevation, which becomes convex and merge with the T waves. The amplitude of the R wave decreases, and the ECG pattern is referred to as Tom stoning of the QRS complex. As the disease progresses, the SD segment returns to the baseline with the Q wave development and the T wave inversion, resulting in a chronic infarct pattern. This table describes the changes occurring in various regions of the myocardium having an acute infarction, and which is used to identify the affected coronary artery where the ECG findings in the inferior wall MI shows SD segment elevation in the leads RON2 to an augmented vector foot or a VF. In the anterostal MI SD segment elevation is seen in leads V1 and V2 and in the anterolateral MI SD segment elevation is seen in leads V5 and V6. The ECG findings in the anterior wall MI show SD segment elevation in two or more leads across the precordium and the anterior apical MI shows SD segment elevation in leads V3 and V4. In the lateral wall, mycin segment elevation in leads 1 and augmented vector left, or a VL is seen. Now let us discuss the pathophysiology of chronic infarction. Chronic MI is identified by the presence of abnormal Q waves which is longer than 0.4 seconds or more and having a depth of at least 1 mm. T wave inversions are present in the leads showing Q waves and the SD segment elevation persists for more than few weeks after an acute infarction. This table describes the changes occurring in various regions of the myocardium having an infarction which have abnormal Q or R waved. The ECG findings in the inferior wall MI shows Q. Waves in leads RON2, FUMFUI, and a VF and in the anterostal MIQ waves in leads V1 and V2. The anterolateral wall MI shows Q waves in leads V5 and V6. The ECG findings in the anterior wall of MI shows Q waves in two or more leads across precordium, and in the anteropical MI, Q waves in leads V3 and V4. In the lateral wall MI the findings include Q waves in leads I and a VL. The posterior wall MI show tall R wave in lead V1 with a duration of 0.004 second or more. Now let us take a quick look at the ECG changes associated with ischemia, injury, and infarction. In ischemia, the changes in waveform include SD segment elevation, which is more than 100 in limb leads, 2 mm in precordial leads, and T wave increases in size. It may be tall, peaked, or inverted. In injury, SD segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads and also T wave inversion or flattened T wave. In acute infarction, SD segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads, hyperacute T waves and change in the depth and width of Q wave. In chronic infarction, SD segment elevation may see T wave inversion of flattened and Q wave inversion. In post infarction, the SD segment returns to normal, T wave may be upright flattened or inverted and pathological Q wave is observed. IHD is caused by progressive narrowing of the coronary arteries, with atherosclerosis being the main contributing factor and gradual progression results in MI. ECG is the mainstay in the diagnosis and there are six steps in interpreting IHD from ECG findings. The ECG findings in stable angina include SD segment elevation and T wave inversion. Unstable angina results in reciprocal SD segment depression. MI includes N-STEMIs and STEMIs.